In this video, I'm going to be talking about the silver nitrate test. And you can use the silver nitrate test to identify unknown halides in a in a solution. So maybe if you had like a test tube and there was some sort of halide solution in there, you could use the silver nitrate test to identify what the halide in there is. So the first thing we do when we're doing this silver nitrate test is let's say we have this solution and we know there's a halide in there but there is a possibility that there might be other ions in there so maybe there's carbonate ions co3 2 minus maybe there's sulfate ions um so4 2 minus and if you had these kinds of ions in the solution they can give you um they can really mess up your results like if you had this in your in your solution, this would give you a false positive result because it would react with the um, the the silver nitrate, which you add after the step I'm talking about. It, it could give you um, basically yeah, a false positive result. Anyway, moving forward from that point, so you add the silver, uh, you add the nitric acid, the nitric acid, which is um HNO three. And this basically sorts out all of those ions which are might be inside that 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 solution. Now, following this step of adding the nitric acid into the solution and clearing up the ions, what we do after that is we add silver nitrate, and this is uh, one of the key steps in the, this process. So we add silver nitrate, and formula of silver nitrate is AgNO3. A G N O three, and the reason why we add this silver nitrate um, to the to the solution is because with certain ions, what happens is the silver nitrate form forms a precipitate. Uh, and, well, the silver ions, the A G plus ions, react with the uh, halide halide ions. So, if you have the X minus. It would basically react with the X minus, and that would produce a precipitate. So it would be a, a silver halide. So AgX in this case. And so this this precip this precipitate produced can can be used to identify what halogen is present because sometimes they are different colors or sometimes uh, they are no color. But yeah, let's go into that. Let's go into that now. So if I was to add this um, AgNO3, this silver nitrate solution, to to a solution which contained fluoride ions, for example, so let me draw f some test tubes here. So this is the one that's got fluoride ions in there, and this is the one with. I might as well put F minus since it's fluoride, and this is the one with chloride ions, Cl minus. This is the one with um, bromide ions, Br minus. And this is the one with iodide ions, I minus. So when I add this AG, AgNO3, the silver nitrate, to the first one, what happens is the F minus reacts with the Ag plus, and the thing that is formed is a silver fluoride. That's AgF. But the thing is, silver fluoride is actually soluble soluble in water. So as soon as this AGF is formed, it's just going to dissolve in water. So this this is this solution is going to end up just being colorless. It's going to end up being colorless, i.e., no precipitate. No precipitate is formed. Now for the chlor for the chlorine bro chloride bromide and iodide ions, something does happen in terms of the um the the, the, the form formation of a precipitate. And so when we add AgNO3 to the chloride ions, what happens is a a, a white precipitate is gonna form. A white precipitate. White precipitate. And it's important to know these colors so that you can identify the halogens in, this, in, in, in a given situation. White precipitate. And if you were to add this silver nitrate to a bromide ion, 
I mean a solution containing bromide ions what would happen is a different color would form and that color would be um, cream it would form a cream precipitate so it's, it's somewhat like the similar to the orange but it's instead of being just orange it's going to be a cream precipitate cream precipitate So let me just add the colors here. I can't exactly draw white on here because it's going to be invisible. But what I'll do is just draw a really light gray color. So I could probably go to a lighter gray than that. So that's the white precipitate that forms. And um, for the BR, cream precipitate forms. So let me just create a cream color here. Okay, there we go. So for the bromide, a cream precipitate is going to form and it's going to be very, very pale, a pale, um, a pale cream precipitate. And for the iodide ions, when we add the AgNO3 to the iodide ions, what forms is a yellow precipitate. So for the iodide ions, we've got a yellow precipitate. And I just want to emphasize that these two are going to be pale. So this is going to be pale and this is going to be pale. So pale cream and pale yellow. And so if I just draw on this yellow precipitate now, it's pale yellow precipitate. So this is what's going to happen when we add the AgNO3 to the iodide ions. Let me just draw an arrow so to the Ag to the iodide. Okay, so those are the things that are going to happen with those those four different um, iodide solutions. Now, looking at this this particular area over here, we can see that the light cream color, the pale cream color, and the pale yellow color are quite similar. In fact, if if we if we just if we were to only look at one at a time, so maybe if I drag it this way, we can only see this one. And it's quite hard to tell whether or not that's that's cream or whether or not that whether that's yellow. And the same for this one, it's sort of similar to yellow in a sense. So what we can actually do is do a further test. Uh, and, and this is part of the silver nitrate test. And what this does is it basically tests what it is basically like a confirmation phase to test what to, to just to confirm what uh, halide ions were present and what this test involves is the addition of um, ammonia in varying concentrations so for the for the first actually let me let me uh, get rid of some of this stuff down here uh, let's the eraser there we go let me get rid of some of that stuff okay so first of all the fluorine the, flu the fluoride we don't well since it's already colorless we don't exactly uh, nothing would happen if we added um, ammonia in here and for the chlorine what would happen if we added um, if we added aqueous ammonia so dilute aqueous ammonia so dilute dilute ammonia so NH3 I'm not going to write aqueous since they're all going to be aqueous. But if we added dilute NH3 to the chlorine, um, the solution of the chlorine uh, precipitate, what we're going to observe is that the precipitate is going to dissolve. So precip precipitate, precipitate dissolves. And if you were to add um, dilute ammonia to the BR minus, not much is going to happen. So what we do is we add concentrated ammonia. Concentrated ammonia. So if we add concentrated ammonia here, concentrated, C-O-N, C-O-N-C. I just abbreviate C-O-N-C, concentrated ammonia. So that's NH3 and that's concentrated aqueous ammonia. When we add the ammonia, 
what we're going to actually observe is that this precipitate is going to dissolve. So precipitate dissolves. And I'll just point an arrow but pointing to that. Con when we add concentrated ammonia, the precipitate of the bromide, the bromide ions, the, the I mean the, the silver bromide precipitate dissolves. Now this one is a little more stubborn. If we add, were to add concentrated ammonia, uh, what's going to happen is it's not going to dissolve. So, and we can use that to identify what it is. So if we let me use this space up here. So if we were to add uh, concentrated concentrated any uh, NH three, which is ammonia, what happens is precipitate precipitate does not dissolve so yeah this extra test helps us to really co just confirm what we what we suspect from the previous test um, so yeah and um, I hope you guys found this video helpful and I'll see you guys in the next video